doctors involved know at the time the toll the disease was destined to take. The gradual unfolding of a worldwide epidemic is tonight's Sunday cover. The year was 1981, and in gay neighborhoods across the country, healthy young men were beginning to come down with a mysterious illness. Dr. Michael Gottlieb had just arrived at UCLA Hospital when his first AIDS patients walked through the door. These patients were critically ill. We're talking about young men, previously healthy, their lungs clogged with this bizarre organism, living on ventilators. Gottlieb was perplexed and decided to notify the Centers for Disease Control, the CDC, about his five cases. Though his report was less than two pages long, its impact would be enormous. Dr. Mervyn Silverman was San Francisco's top health official at the time. He received the ominous report. Wait a minute, we're seeing patients that have similar symptoms. And that's when it became very clear that we weren't dealing with a medical oddity, but something that was much more pervasive. Lori Garrett was a reporter in San Francisco. There were already stories floating around about somebody who'd been, you know, vibrant and alive and healthy and was in his 20s, and now the rumor was he has some weird skin thing. Or... Reports of gay men suffering from a range of illnesses, from a rare pneumonia to rare skin cancer, began popping up all over the country. Clinics that had not existed a year before were now overflowing with people. Every case we saw was a homosexual or bisexual man, and so putting all that together brought up a tremendous number of questions and a great deal of fear because we didn't know whether the clinicians who were dealing with these patients were at risk, whether their families were at risk. We, I mean, there, was, there were all the questions and there were no answers. The gay community began mobilizing, pushing for more resources to fight the devastating disease now called AIDS. Their pleas were ignored at first by the Reagan administration, which was reluctant to acknowledge the homosexual community. I felt like the people on the rooftops during Katrina, uh, looking to the government for help, waiting for help. Dr. Gottlieb began secretly treating actor Rock Hudson. I was in a difficult position. I didn't want to compromise his confidentiality, and I couldn't. And yet, down deep, I knew that if his diagnosis ever became public, it would energize the cause. Persistent rumors of Hudson's illness were eventually confirmed by Dr. Gottlieb himself in 1985. Mr. Hudson is being evaluated and treated for complications of acquired immune deficiency syndrome. His case would mark a milestone in the history of AIDS, and even though it increased the public dialogue, it was another 10 years before an effective drug was developed to slow its spread. As for a cure... I don't think I'll see it in my lifetime. I think there will be a 50th anniversary of AIDS. From those first five reported cases in 1981, AIDS is spread around the world to claim at least 25 million lives. Yet, as we're about to see, a few have managed to defy the odds. Finding love while fighting AIDS. This woman had it the secret, and we'll share it when our coverage of AIDS at 25 continues.